This is Dr. Jerome Corsi. Today it's Friday. It's January 26, 2024. Uh, thank you for joining us on thetruthcentral.com. We're doing a podcast every weekday. You can follow me on uh, X at, at Corsi Jerome 1, C O R S I J E R O M E, number one, Corsi Jerome 1, all small letters. And uh, you can uh, also our Substack. We're building content on the Substack now pretty rapidly. And the Substack is Jerome Corsi PhD, all together, all small letters or uh, no periods or, do, dot or spaces. Jerome Corsi PhD dot Substack dot com. Uh, let's get into the stories today. Uh, the uh, first story I want to cover is that it looks like 25 states now are rallying behind Texas on this battle over the border. Uh, so a letter was circulated among Republican governors. They've, joined, they've signed this uh, joint letter to support the Texas resistance. They say, we stand in solidarity with our fellow governor, Greg Abbott, in the state of Texas, and utilizing every tool and strategy, including razor wire fences to secure the border. Read the statement signed by almost every Republican governor. So this show of support uh, is coming as uh, Texas has mobilized considerable resources, including National Guard at the U.S.-Mexico border and state troopers uh, on the premise that the Biden administration has abrogated its right to its, its duty to protect the borders under the Constitution. And the Constitution specifies that when this happens, the states have the ability to defend themselves. This is probably going to be a Supreme Court case within, in the not-too-distant future. But again, what it demonstrates is the uh, Biden administration is allowing this invasion to come forward without any inspection of the people coming across. I think the part that offends me the most, besides the the drug cartels and the you know, the gangs and the criminals is the unaccompanied children. The likelihood is these children are, are in sex slavery and they've been told to show up at some place in the United States. If they don't, somebody gets killed or whatever happens. But the point is, this, this is a horrible situation. It's a human tragedy. And this is the kind of situation that these woke globalists uh, tend to produce. Uh, what I'm seeing increasingly is that we are dealing with a uh, an anti-globalist alliance, you know, that's this, this forming finally, that we're beginning to see resistance to these globalist monsters. And uh, I'm going to read you a declaration here that I'm going to publish on Substack, saying that um, most of the world's nations are ruled by emissaries of supernatural powers who obey their orders not only in violation of the Constitution's they're sworn to defend, but above all, to the citizens who have become victims and hostages to their political class. The United States, Canada, Australia, European states, China, everywhere the same thing is happening, following the same script under one direction, to believe that in the connected society, the events in the other states have no correlation, constitutes an unforgivable naivete, belied first of all by the facts themselves, their consistency and synchrony, the lies that have been spread everywhere to cover up an infinity of crimes. NATO, the UN, the World Health Organization, the European Union, International Monetary Fund, the World Economic Forum, self-described philanthropic foundations and other private entities which no one has elected and to, know which, to, to which no one has transferred national sovereignty are making decisions of great import on the world's population without any mandate. By their own admission, the Western world must be radically altered in its social, political, cultural, religious, economic, and health fabric through social engineering interventions achieved with the cooperation of individual governments. In many cases, these interventions are being financed by the World Bank, the European Central Bank, and large investment funds entities believed by almost everyone to be, quote, public, but in reality, private and under control of big families that control world finance. Conflicts of interest are not to be counted 
Employees of companies are hired in supervisory bodies that are supposed to oversee the companies from which they come and in which at the end of their term, they are hired again. Relatives of directors of public bodies are called upon to supervise the work of their rel relatives. Companies engaging in publishing and media that belong to investment groups make free information impossible. Recent scandals in the pharmaceutical industry are but the tip of the iceberg that no one cares to denounce. It goes on. And the major conclusion, we're facing a global coup d'etat pursued by a highly efficient organization and spread throughout all sectors of public administration. This uh, woke has swept the world. We're headed towards communist China. The common denominator of this ideological warfare is the aversion to natural law and the monetization, that is the transformation into commodities of all aspects of human life. The, this combination of death and money is repeated at all the programmatic points of agenda 2030 so that even those who do not share its crazy ideas have an economic interest in going along with them or cooperating in their implementation. Religious leaders, instead of opposing this overthrow, have aligned themselves with the New World Order and have been instrumental in getting the masses to accept it. Dissent is first ignored, then discredited, and finally criminally prosecuted in the paradox of societies that claim to be democratic. I think it's a very effective statement. And I think this is, it goes on for several pages. And uh, it's showing that there is this evil uh, darkness, this woke evil darkness, which is neo-Marxist. It has descended upon the nations and is threatening to depopulate in massive numbers, billions of people, kill them one way or the other, and to take over power for a small, unelected oligarchy, these rich people who are criminals and they're, whose intents are demonic. Now, let's co cover a couple of other stories here, and then I'm going to ask Chris to comment on this. we we'll get a discussion going. But the point of one story here, this is Alex Newman, who's a good journalist. He's reporting that the brainwashing children with this critical race theory is starting in kindergarten. And he says it's a deadly serious matter. So after claiming for years the conservatives were imagining the racial indoctrination of children in government schools, the narrative is shifting. In fact, a group of, quote, academic and far-left activists re released a new guide to teach the Marxist-inspired sociology view known as critical race theory to kindergarten children. Even children as young as three will be racist without enough, quote, anti-fascist propaganda, they suggested. So this guide, which is the reflection in children's racial learning, argues that combating racism must begin as early as possible. If not children growing up in the grade schools, suggests that the racist society around them will likely become racist by default. About age three or four, white children generally show clear pro-white biases. This is insanity. This is nonsense. Children at three are not concerned about race. They don't understand the concept of race at three years old. They're barely conscious of who they are. And so these fringe groups who are brainwashing babies in kindergarten with CRT is deadly serious matter. What they're doing is creating divisions, divisions between people on the basis of race that are going to flow in the minds of these children for as long as they live. Uh, to stop it, the parents who uh, want to get their children protected are going to have to make sacrifices, increasingly taking their children out of public schools. Let's quit calling on public schools. These are government-controlled schools. And the world teacher, you know, the teachers' unions are indoctrinating children and protecting their uh, fiefdom. Once these children enter the school, parents have lost control, and they're in the hands of these demons who are going to try to begin with the race theory and then convince them that they have to change their sex. So the next story, almost 30% of Gen Z claim they're queer. 
Okay, this is according to a recent study that says that Gen Z, those born between 1997 and 2012, it's a less religious, less Republican, and more queer than any generation before. This is according to the <clears throat> Nonpartisan Public Religion Research Institute. The survey was conducted between August 21st and September 15th last year, 2023, a sample size of over 6,000 Americans between the ages of 13 and 25. So they are less likely than Gen Xers, baby, uh, uh, baby boomers and members of the silent generation to identify as Republican by a large margin, almost 20%. Again, they're almost 20% more than all those groups less likely to identify as Republicans. Uh, they're less likely to identify as religious affiliated. And Gen Z, they're more unlikely to identify as gay, lesbian, bisexual, or something else, with 28% identifying as LGBT compared to 16% of millennials, 7% of Gen X, 4% of baby boomers, and 4% of the silent generation. This is a dramatic increase. And it doesn't reflect the natural order. Uh, natural order, there's always going to be a few who are gay. There's always going to be a few uh, who are whatever, but not large per percentages unless they're indoctrinated this way, unless they're told from the beginning that their race is, if they're white, they're evil, white, white supremacists, uh, they're likely terrorists, and they're, they have to be suppressed. Uh, all this oppressed people have to be lifted up. This is classic communism. Uh, and and I, I documented in, in this book I wrote on the truth about neo-Marxism, cultural Maoism, and anarchy, I made it clear that the original intent of the Communist Party, and which was to uh, essentially exploit class differences, that Marx thought there would be a class warfare, did not occur that way. The decision was to exploit race. Now, there's Bella Dodd, who testified, she was a communist, testified before the, uh, the a member, pretty high-ranking member, she was on the National Committee, she was attended meetings of the National Committee. She testified before the House on American Affairs Committee in, in, 1950, in the 1950s. And in her book, what she declared uh, was the following. The sessions of the December 1946 National Committee of the Communist Party in the United States were notable for their long-winded, long-spun-out, and fantastic justifications of, quote, the self-determination of the Negro and the Black Belt. So originally what they wanted, and this was William Foster, who was proposing these ideas, he wrote several books on communism in, in the uh, 1920s, right after the revolution. In fact, he was very close to, to the revolution in Russia when it occurred. Uh, Stalin also thought that there could, in the South, be uh, a segregation, a race separation, which would take Southern states and have them secede from the Union and make a black United States of America. But essentially, that the this idea died out. Stalin moved away from Marx's idea that a workers' revolt based on class conflicts would produce a worldwide communist revolution, rising and taking the wealth of the capitalists to share equality. So as communist expert, I'm just reading from my book, communist expert Trevor Loudon explained, quote, before revolutionaries can integrate all nations into a global socialist superstate, existing nations must be broken down and fractured along class and racial lines. Well, eventually the idea of a separate black United States died out. And what the uh, communists decided to do uh, in the 20s was to move towards just radicalizing and, and strengthening the tensions over race, saying that the racial discrimination had to end. So the whole idea, and by the way, then the Communist Party in the 1930s decided to take over the Democratic Party. This happened out in Hawaii. I uh, point out that Jack Kuano was young longshore leader, longshoreman leader, who joined the Communist Party in Hawaii in the 1920s. Through the post-World War II period, Kawano played
played a role in the International Longshore and Warehouse Union, the ILWU, and the Democratic Party in Hawaii. On February 10, 1951, he wrote a letter to Hawaii's Territorial Subversive Activities Committee in which he admitted to having joined the Communist Party. In that letter, Kuano explained why he initially felt the Communist Party's objectives were consistent with his aims for the ILWU. Quote, I did not think it was harmful to the Union as long as the Communists were willing to assist me in bringing up the living standards of the working man because they led me to believe that the basic existence of the Communist Party was primarily to promote the best interests of the working man. He wrote, he said, quote, I decided to quit the Communist Party because I found the primary purpose of the Communist Party was not for the best interests of the working man, but to dupe the members of the union for purposes other than strictly trade union matters. And so he blew the whistle saying that the communists were in Hawaii in the 1950s trying to take over the government and make it into a communist state. The first, well, it wasn't a state yet, first communist territory. And uh, that's where Obama grew up. Frank Marshall Davis moved out to Hawaii in that period of time from Chicago. Frank Marshall Davis, according to Obama's book, The Obama, which he wrote about the dreams for my father, and I pointed out my book, The Abomination, Frank Marshall Davis was the mentor who largely helped raise Obama in communist ideas. And what we're seeing here is the outcome where the shift has occurred when the economic friction was not enough, then we moved to race, and now it's moved into this whole woke gender confusion, which is uh, negative and destructive by its entire nature. Uh, and uh, I want to talk about the remedy for this in just a second, but uh, Chris, do you want to comment on the, all this? Well, like you said, break the nation down. That's what's happening right now. That's what's been happening. You see the borders... Uh, if, if Biden has his way, the borders wouldn't be existent at all. I mean, I, I mean, I might be exaggerating the point, but that's part of the uh, Davos dream as well, bringing people up from certain areas to get into the Western world, break those nations down. You see what's happening in every one of them. Uh, have them fight amongst themselves, and all of a sudden you can control. It's a uh, more complicated divide and conquer, but the idea is for leftist control, you have to, uh, let's put it this way, celebrate the ingrates and break the nation up that way. It's a very destructive ideology, and the World Economic Forum is laying out the agenda. It's out in the open. Klaus yeah. Schwab's book on reset set the whole agenda. And if I go back to this anti-globalist, um, uh, um, really a manifesto, as it were, but saying that here's how we defeat these people. The, uh, the whole idea here is that we need to get light shined on this. And I think the most effective way to get light shined on it is uh, to attack this woke in its weakest spot. Its weakest spots are corruption. So you see massive corruption in the United States politics, as exemplified most by the Bidens. And then secondly, the corruption is intended to destroy the children, attack the children, and, and, and produce not only racial hatred amongst the children, but also confuse them about their, their gender, even before kids know what sex is all about. They begin this confusion. And this, you know, the World Economic Forum, the states would, the, these insanity, and this is really demonic. What this, uh, this announcement is saying is that this is really a, you know, this is an anti-globalist manifesto, uh, is what they're aiming towards, where the citizens of nations involved basically rise up and say no more. It, this has to do with protecting the children because these people are pedophiles. The people are encouraging. Look, the amount of child trafficking going on in the United States is not accidental. Right, and you need open borders for that, by the way, or virtually open borders. And well, also the drugs are not accidental. You know, as I said, I caught HSBC money laundering for the drug cartels. Back in 2011, they got a $1.9 billion fine. Nobody went to jail. And it, it, it should be clear, the, treasury, the, the Treasury had to be monitoring that because they monitor all wire transfers. Well, it should be noted the, uh, the plethora of missing children during the Obama-Biden administration as well uh, was, was brought up by the New York Times, interestingly enough. 
And the comparison, a comparison between that and the Trump administration, and of course into today, there, there are some serious issues when certain people are in power. Well, and again, it is a demonic party. It's a communist party. It's, it's intended to destroy the United States. And you can see the results of it. We're spending money like crazy. We're, we're bankrupting the country. And it won't stop. What happens to all the money we send to Ukraine? You know, it's <laughs> It, it goes to defense contractors. It goes. Well, and also, and also, even Mitch McConnell said it. It benefits Americans. It's it's in our interest. He says. Yeah. <laughs> he also gets stolen a lot. I mean, Biden, when he was uh, it, vice president, encouraged this law to be passed to give money to Ukraine to promote their natural gas industry because they wanted Ukraine to compete with Russia on natural gas, and the money got stolen, okay? And they have got into Burisma, which was, Hunter Biden was on the board, getting nice payoff. Everybody in the Biden family was paid off. Look at all the properties they own. And Biden is wandering around the White House talking to the pictures like Nixon used to do, probably, if he, can, <laughs> if he even recognizes that they're there. And for different reasons, yes. Yes, for different reasons. But the point is, uh, we are, th these demons are creating a world that is insane and dysfunctional, and they're doing it on purpose. You know, they want to end the, cut off the food supply, uh, and and people are beginning to protest. The not getting reported here today today in the news. You know, the uh, there was a, a trucker protest in Paris to cut Paris off from many of the northern cities because the roads were completely clogged with trucks. Same thing is happening in Berlin. And now uh, farmers are saying enough. You know, if we kill all the livestock and eat bugs, we might as well go to primitive living. I mean, it, people don't realize how much of the world is uninhabitable, largely because it's forest, it's, it's extremely cold, it, it has violent storms because of the nature of the, the tropics that they're in. Uh, the earth is a complex place. And it's an enormous place from a human beings' perspective, uh, it, it, and much of it is unoccupied. It's not overcrowded. But the point is, these people want you to think everything is like Hong Kong or New York City. There's too many people. We have to eliminate people. The agenda is absolutely evil, and it's satanic. Chris, oh, again, they want to reduce the world's complex problems into slogans and uh, maybe some pretty packages. This way it's palatable for people who, uh, who seem to be easily brainwashed, if you will. And again, you, if you want to, if, uh, and going back to your last story about, or one, a couple of stories ago about the CRT invasion into the uh, preschool and kindergarten classrooms, the idea is make less, make it so people, it will be, it will be easier in the future to uh, make sure people aren't stubborn enough to follow, to uh, not fall for the brainwashing of the future. That That's, that's something they're trying to do. That's why they're starting with with, with children. It's starting with children to indoctrinate them. Um, right. And by the time they're finished with a couple more generations, you'll have 70% of the people saying they're LGBT. Add that to the fact that uh, uh, schools, the curriculum has been dumbed down. Invented spelling and invented math have been, uh, uh, or and, and of course, uh, the elimination of the idea in many instances that uh, young people have to learn how to write an essay uh, properly. Uh, making it easier for people to pass, uh, uh, excluding A, B, C, D grades, and using pass fail as a uh, as a uh, as a standard. These things, th these are ways to uh, let's say dumb down an entire generation. And uh, gosh, I, I, I dread to I dread the thought of what could happen in the future when it comes to dumbing people down. But uh, what I'm, I guess what I'm trying to say in a roundabout way is uh, there's a correlation between dumbing down America. And all these uh, leftist policies becoming more mainstream. Uh, there's yes, I, I agree with you. Uh, the price of gold today is over two thousand, two thousand dollars, two thousand forty-two dollars per ounce. And I'm encouraging you to get this free book: How the Coming Global Crash Will Create an Historic Gold Rush. I wrote it with Dean Heskin, who's the head of Swiss America. And you can get a free copy of it. And do talk to them. Gold is going to become important to own. Uh, to get a copy of this free book, call 
And uh, also, take a look at the website. If you like this show, take a look at the website. Uh, uh, there's a lot of offers here from Swiss America, including free newsletters, etc. And this Walking Liberty half dollar offer, you can get up to 250 of these coins at about the price at about what they're worth in silver. It's a loss leader for Swiss America. Talk to them. Get some money into gold, especially in your retirement accounts. And... Um, Chris, I want to show something. If go down right there with that e pipe, I want to show people that we're there's the Walking Liberty half dollar. I'm, I'm going to feature. See on the right there, <clears throat> it looks like a cell phone. That's an application. And by the way, I'm selling books. I have a, a whole set of authors' copies. I'm selling them, but I want you to see this tool. This tool allows you to create your own social media. It has. You can post messages. You can change the content. You can build a list of friends. We're going to be again offering this. I want to introduce this. This is a revolutionary tool, and I want to show people how to use it. So that technology itself is something that we're going to be introducing and putting around the country. I think it will change dramatically our reliance on the social media that is controlled by government. Uh, this Each one of these, you see how flexible it is. You can put a different message on it. You can put different books. You can take donations. You can sell things. Uh, you can create lists through this of followers. It's a very, very effective tool, and it's relatively inexpensive to utilize. So I'm going to start featuring this and explaining it over the next few weeks because I think we're, we're, we're using this effectively right now in, in telemedicine, and I think it's got a lot of applications that we want you to understand. These are the kinds of tools which are going to allow us to communicate, and again, um, get away from the control of government, which is monitoring all the social media that's public. Uh, everything you do, everything you write is monitored. You know, the National Security Agency, when I was before the Mueller investigation, they told me, Chris is demonstrating how it works and how you can buy books with it. And how you can buy, I'm selling some of my older books, which are going to be rare, the Atomic Iran, and which is still a very good book, and Black Gold Stranglehold on First book I ever wrote on, on abiotic oil. But the point is, these, these are tools that allow us to, you know, it's almost like organizing together to reestablish the values which the United States was created to preserve. And it starts with God. It starts to go with, with family. It starts with, again, understanding that as human beings, we do have rights, even though, this guy, Noah Harari, Harari, the World Economic Forum specialist, says that we you can't see the rights, so they don't exist. You can cut a person open, you can see the heart and the lungs and the liver, but you don't see the rights. Well, that's because, again, these postmodern, postmodernist neo-Marxists think everything is a word construct because they don't believe in any values. If there's no values then there's nothing to stop them from being the masters of the world and putting everybody else into poverty and slavery, which is what they want. They and their machines, they think, can become the transhumans that will rule the earth to their favor. Okay, so let's, let's I want a couple, a couple more stories I want to emphasize here because it just shows the insanity of this whole uh, climate change movement. So Germany now, because of the economic slump, of course, Germany shut down its nuclear power plants. Real smart idea, you know, really brilliant. So they made energy more expensive. So Germany now is going to base its energy transaction. They thought wait, they would have a fleet of hydrogen-fueled power plants. But of course, what the problem was, they were going to use the money that was from the pandemic, and they were going to transfer it into this new uh, building these new power plants, and the uh, German high court said they couldn't do that. So now Germany is stuck, and they're saying that they're going to go back to coal. So Germany's goal of producing 100% of its power in a climate-neutral way by 2035 is unrealistic during what is, appears to be a long budgetary crisis that Germany is entering. Germany is actually 
becoming a failed economic state. Again, they've uh, Germany lost the Russian natural gas because of the sanctions that Germany imposed and the EU imposed on Russia for invading Ukraine. So Germany is going back to coal. Why? Because otherwise the people are going to have to tear down the forests and start burning wood fires to stay warm in the winter. It's cold in the winter in Germany. Okay, so the that 7 billion euro that was marked for building all of these hydrogen-fueled power plants failed when the Constitutional Court blocked the transfer of unused pandemic funds to green investments, thereby blowing a uh, a six a sixty billion dollar hole in Berlin's finances. To make matters worse, Germany's decision to close its nuclear power plants. I'm reading from one of the articles in the, in the German press, largely at the behest of the Green Party, and the loss of low cost Russian natural gas meant that it would have to fall back on coal. Okay, and at the same time, you're finding China, and China, of course. Is, has no intention of going to net zero. China knows that that's insane. China's in the middle itself of an economic downturn. Its stock market has lost like 25% of its value over the last two years. And again, you won't find this in the mainstream media. They're not going to report this. But China has a, quote, extraordinary growth of coal power, uh, uh, power approvals. China approved 106 gigawatts of coal fire power stations last year, the biggest increase since 2015. Uh, this is a massive increase in China's determination to use coal. Uh, and the, this is across 82 cities, different sites. It's going to involve building 168 different units to produce energy through coal. And this is six times greater than the new coal starts in the rest of the world altogether. So China is not transitioning to green energy. And if China doesn't, then our attempt to go to green energy and reduce carbon dioxide is insanity because the net effect with China increasing the use of coal is, is not going to be net zero. Now, the whole idea of this, this going to stop using Hydrocarbon fuels, because they emit carbon dioxide, is not climate science. Again, almost all the ideas propagated by this woke revolution, and this is a international woke revolution. We're in the middle of what Bishop Vigano cites as a attempt by Satan to once and forever destroy God and rule the earth, and. Uh, unfortunately, uh, the a lot of our, virtually all of our institutions, including the mainstream media, are now marching to Satan's tune, which is to me unbelievable. But it is happening. Uh, I want to read a paragraph from a a letter that Archbishop Vigano, and of course he's the Catholic Archbishop who was papal nuncio over the United States until. He began opposing Pope Francis on issues largely of Pope Francis is leaning toward approving civil unions, same-sex marriages, uh, arguing for an increasing, uh, uh, for abortion increasing. I mean, uh, Pope Francis is clearly demonstrating that he is, uh, in fact, a Marxist. And that's not what the Pope should be doing. He's, he's deviated significantly from the gospel. Okay, so what Bishop Vigano wrote in this private letter, which we published, it's available now on the internet. It was also published by the, the Gateway Pundit. Bishop Vigano wrote, quote, this global coup d'etat, and it is a global coup d'etat, must be denounced. And those responsible must be tried and judged by an international court. But above all, it is necessary for all of us to understand that this all-out war against humanity is not motivated only by the lust for wealth and power, but mainly by a religious motive, a theological reason. The reason is Satan's hatred, hatred of God, hatred of God's creation, and hatred of man 
who was created in the image and likeness of God. Bill Gates, Klaus Schwab, George Soros, and the hundreds of servants whom they blackmail in governments all hate God. They hate life, which only God can give. They hate love, which comes only from God. They hate peace, which can reign only where Christ reigns. As Tucker Carlson said a few days ago, we are facing people who serve Satan and the demons of hell, just as normal people worship and serve God. And he continues, Bishop Bigano, this then is a battle in which body and soul, matter and spirit, are made the object of a mortal attack by men and spiritual powers. But let us not forget that if our enemy avails himself of the help of infernal spirits, we have on our side the Lord God of the armies arrayed, all the hosts of angels and saints infinitely more powerful. God is almighty. Let us never forget that. And he is father. He does not abandon his children in times of trial. But then the advice that Bishop uh, Archbishop Vigano gives is the same conclusion that we're giving here. He says, in conclusion, Bishop Vigano's letter, quote, I therefore ex ex exhort you, dear friends, to fight this battle with the spiritual weapons that God places at your disposal. Prayer, trust in the Lord, and awareness that this enemy will not be defeated where it is most organized and fearsome, but by striking it where it's weak. This weakness comes from its corruption, from its being subservient to evil, from the execrable sins that it has committed and still commits against God's little children. Because I tell you that the men and women who in these four years have submitted and endured lockdowns, violations of their rights, job deprivation, and social segregation are not willing to tolerate the crimes that this cursed network of perverts and pedophiles commits against children. That, that's a key point. Uh, I used to ask myself why ancient Rome, which was a pagan nation, the most powerful in the ancient world, went Christian under Constantine. And, and I finally decided that the mothers who had to endure up to nine months of being pregnant, then childbirth, which is by by no means fun, and then have to raise a child who from its birth is essentially helpless. Uh, and it, this takes years. And then at an early age, the child gets perverted by these demons who want to confuse it about sex and, and make it hate over race. The mothers got sick of their children being made into perverts. And they finally said, we're done with this, especially when Christianity came along it was a religion that taught family, raising children. This is fundamental. You know, the teachings of the Catholic Church, which Archbishop Vegano is now attacking, the fundamental teaching is that sex is for procreation and that the obligations of parents do not stop with intercourse. They involve raising that child with a moral education. And the couple is to stay together for life, you know, ex expressing their sexes with each other as partners, not having divorces and thinking that they can break up families at will. Uh, these are ideas that fostered a society that is disintegrating. And at the end of ancient Rome, going c Christian, it was such a, a mad place to live, insane. For all these gods, all these rituals, I mean, they were doing bizarre, bizarre things. So one of the keys in defeating this woke is to show it for what it is. You know, how many people want their child stolen on the street and sold into sex slavery and you don't know where in the world they are? Now watch the movie Sound of Freedom. Let's see what a horror show it is. This would not go on if a government of the United States wanted to stop it. We would not have Drugs come. We are the drug cartels. Government of the United States is involved in the pedophilia business. And, and these demons with Jeffrey Epstein, how many of them were compromised by their sex acts with children? How many times did Bill Clinton go to the island? You know, what, what is Hillary Clinton? Because Bill Clinton certainly indicated she was bisexual. 
all these issues of sexual perversion are at the heart of the evil that has descended upon us. And the way to end it is through ridiculing it and exposing it. Uh, you know, if you, if anyone, need to, you need to see a pride parade. See them walking in the streets naked with leather and chains and whips. Sex acts that they're acting out that are sacrilegious, involving crucifixes and other holy items which they are uh, de abusing. Walk, see how they are bizarrely dressed and their bizarre behaviors. You know, these she-men. And it is bizarre. Uh, and children look, and th this is parading in front of children. Story hour. Uh, this insanity has got to stop. And when people see it for what it is, because homosexuality was marketed, marketed just like they would market a soap product or sell a car by saying, these are just two men who love each other. Why would you care? Well, truthfully, I don't care. But the point is, it is when this becomes rampant, when they demand to be celebrated, when they demand to be the ones who are in the lead and control the institutions, instead of marginalize this very small percentage of the population, that we would say, do whatever you want to do. You know, a certain percentage of the population is going to commit suicide. You're probably not going to prevent them. But are you really going to have these bizarre behaviors be celebrated in the movies and the televisions and the commercials? I mean, I, th I think the reaction ought to be like the reaction to Bud Light. Turn them off. Don't watch them. Super Bowls with the Black National Anthem. I think, you know, football in the United States has lost a lot of viewers with the kneeling and everything. It looked like it was getting rid of it. They play a Black National Anthem at the Super Bowl this year. A lot of people are going to be turned off the game. I probably will be one of them. This is not that we hate black people. It's we hate the Marxism that is behind this radicalizing race in order to divide us and saying, well, but, you know, you, what are you, racist? No, no, no. That whole issue is demonizing the white race. The racists are the Marxists. Everything is backwards. This is language perversion at its core. And that's what I demonstrate in the book, The Truth About Neo-Marxism, Cultural Maoism, and Anarchy. These people produce anarchy. They start out as Marxists. They're telling you all the good they're going to do, all the utopia they're going to create. They demonize work. They, uh, they make raw the tensions of race. They confuse you about sex. And then they own you. And so give them plenty of you know, food and circus, give them lots of sports, give them an internet where they can sit in front of it all day and be mesmerized. Let them marginalize themselves. This is, we're, we're living in right now in a time which is end times, and the battle is a final battle. Doesn't mean it's all going to end, but it means we're, Satan is now being given reign, and God is, the, the test here is whether Satan takes over or whether God wins. And I always say in the end, God always wins, and God will win here too. Chris, what are your thoughts? I'll tell you this. I'm going to go along with what you said before. The, the, uh, we should ridicule these guys. And let's start right here, okay? How many leftists does it take to put in a light bulb? Tell me. None. The government's going to do that for you. <laughs> that's a good one. There you go. <laughs> All right, that's that's where it starts, light bulb jokes. Then we move forward. So, yeah. So, it's amazing how we're taking all this stuff seriously when only 20, 30 years ago, they were a subject of ridicule. This is their rightful place. This is where Klaus Schwab and his World Economic Forum types belong. It, and this is where those uh, soy-munching, soy-faced, super soilgers, I love saying that, uh, belong as well. Well, look, let's talk about Israel for a minute. Israel right now, The Hague is probably going to vote today to... Do say that Israel is committing genocide and war crimes. Of course. Of course. Israel was attacked massively. And the attack on Israel was one in which I want to read something before we quote quit. And I'm going to pull it up here. But Israel, um, when the attack occurred on October 7th, people think that just the Jews were attacked. That's not the case. The Gate, uh, the Gate Stone Institute. Let me get this up here just for a minute. I uh, had a great article yesterday 
that I, I was reading. And by the way, people have to start reading again. Uh, you, you cannot expect yourself to, it, it, we've ended reading. People aren't reading books. <laughs> it, it's, you know, it's just a, a tragedy that people are not educating themselves. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to try to find this one here, um, if I can find it. The, the people who were killed in the October 7th attack were not just the Jews. The people who were attacked were anyone who was there. And the killing was included killing Arabs, killing Muslims. Uh, and that's something that we people don't understand about, about Israel. Israel allows Muslims to be citizens and many of them were fighting for israel many of them were in the crowds that were and and the also different groups bedouins and other groups live in israel and these attacks were uh killing anyone who was there and our administration thinks that the uh, palestinian authority will or hamas if given a state will cease inciting Palestinians against Israel. But in fact, th these various Palestinian leaders of the Palestinian Authority are themselves terrified of Hamas and even more terrified of their own people. And so th the hatred at the heart of this anti-Semitism will not allow um, the, there to be a peaceful Palestinian state coexisting with Israel. What Israel is doing on the Gaza Strip, and Israel does not seem to be stopping, is to be pressing the attack in the southern part of the Gaza Strip with an intention to destroy Hamas. And they want to create a one-mile buffer between, between the Gaza Strip and Israel. And they're certainly going to be hardening the target before they ever allow there to be a uh, any solution the Gaza is not going back to the Palestinian control anytime near soon. Chris? No, no, they're not. And the fact is, any way, any way that the international community is trying to press Israel into forcing a, uh, or forcing themselves to succumb to another two-state solution, which isn't working or hasn't worked. Yeah, look, the Palestinians were able to govern a small strip in Gaza, and they and what happens? Hamas takes over. What what do you think will occur? What do you think will develop if the uh, if the Palestinians and definitely uh, the the potential for the for a hate group like or, or excuse me a terror group like Hezbollah or or Hamas to infiltrate a, a lot of these already many of these already angry people here uh, wind up having settlements or established homelands on both sides, established nations on both sides of Israel. Well, the, what, the, what do you think will happen? Yeah, th that's the problem is that, you know, the whole, uh, th what Trump was working to get was agr agreements from the various Muslim states surrounding Israel that they would coexist. And that had merit to it because, again, the Israelis would be able to make that region blossom and would do a great deal to improve the economic condition of Saudi Arabia and the other countries who are surrounding it. But the point is, the hatred of the Jews is so overwhelming and so irrational that there's no possibility of reason being entered into the equation. None. So it, it, it's automatic here. It's automatic with these people in the in the uh, at least in the Western world. Yes, the Arab world. You understand their point of view and how they're going to push. The fact is that we have gener we have uh, generations of let's say. Mm, populations and in many instances i'll put in quotes leaders who look at the world in in, in the very overly simplistic v uh, view as a group of oppressors and victims they they want the world to see israel as the white oppressor the people that are the attackers themselves and they minimize the fact that you're talking about an organized terror group an organized group that waited for a long time to strike and they attacked unarmed young people that's what they did, and older people, and they raped women, unarmed people. When they finally faced armed people in one or two kibbutzes, <laughs> well, <laughs> they were kind of pushed away. Uh, I want to read something from a Israeli soldier 
who died uh, in the combat in, in Gaza, he said, he wrote this before he died, he said, it's disheartening to know that among the fallen heroes are Bedouin and Druze soldiers, Muslims and Christians who courageously defended our country, Israel. The Bedouin community mourns all civilian victims regardless of their background, Jews, Christians, or Muslims. This brings me to a crucial point. We all share the same destiny. Our strength lies in unity. Unfortunately, there are those who seek to undermine cooperation between different sectors, sowing seeds of mistrust. I urge you not to be swayed by such attempts and to stand strong in our shared commitment to unity. That was Israel Defense Force Sergeant First Class Ahmed Abu Latif, 26, a husband and father uh, to a one-year-old baby, a Muslim, who was killed on January 22nd during the fighting between Israel and Hamas in the Gaza Strip. He posted that on Facebook on November 13th, 2023. And the next paragraph here, writing about that, Hamas, Hamas's October 7th atrocities did not distinguish between Jew and Arab, old and young, male and female, black and white. At least 20 Arab Israeli citizens were murdered by Hamas terrorists. 20 Arab Israeli citizens murdered by Hamas during the attack on that day or by Hamas rocket attacks in the ensuing days. Most of the victims were Bedouin residents living in the south of Israel. Moreover, several Bedouin men and women were abducted by Hamas. So he says, it is, so this author whose name is Bassam Tawil on the GatestoneInstitute.com says, it is no wonder then that an overwhelming majority of the Israeli Arab public opposed the Hamas attack. A study co co conducted by Nimrod Nir of the Adam Institute and Dr. Mohammed Khalili among the Arab public showed that most Arab Arabs support Israel's right to defend itself and expressed a willingness to volunteer to help civilians who were harmed during the Hamas attack. Studies show that almost 80% Israeli Arabs oppose the Hamas attack, and 85% oppose the kidnapping of civilians. Uh, these are facts that are not reported. And these are facts that encourage me to understand that the human spirit will triumph. Uh, and I want to conclude with this. Um, let's wrap it up. The In the end, God will always win. That, why? As, as Bishop Vigano stresses, the the God is at the heart of a human being. And I don't care whether Harari can't see it. Those who have a spiritual awareness can certainly see it. You can see it, right, Chris? I mean, you can see exactly what all this is about. Oh, yes. I, uh, we can see that, and that's what we're here for. We're, for those who uh, can see it, well, we're, we're fine entertainment, and we're fine sources of information. But we all have to spread this to people who can't see it, and there are far too many of those. Yeah, and or, or won't. There are people who won't see it, though. That's another problem. We're posting and broadcasting a lot of different uh, channels these days. Show if you go back to the homepage, Chris, in the upper right hand corner. Uh, just mention a few of the platforms we're on. We're on several platforms, and whatever you're watching now, we're on that one. If <laughs> if that's right, as far as the other platforms, you can find us on YouTube, and when they take us off the air, you can find us on Rumble. Although we're there all the time anyway, so you can take your pick. You can also find every program we do here on this website. We have the audio version of the program right here on uh, on the right side. Right side. You can also find that on your iTunes, your iHeartRadio, or uh, Apple Podcasts, if you will, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Spreaker, uh, Podbean, Podchaser, Amazon Music, and, of course, Alexa, Google Podcasts, and much, much more. We also... Uh, are available. Our videos are available on this site as well. You can find the latest ones. You can also search for them. We're under, you can find us on our podcast, but you can also you can watch directly from our website and you can listen directly from our website, thetruthcentral.com. So visit that, have fun, take a few reads, check out some of Dr. Corsi's books, a link to the Substack, And well, it's a full service website. That's all I can tell you. That's what the uh, that's what my Substack looks like. And if you're watching in a video, that's what it looks like. And Jerome Corsi, PhD.com and posting articles about abiotic oil, about neo-Marxism, about the global coup d'etat, uh, about the pandemic. We've got quite a lot of content on the site and there's going to be increasingly more. 
And I think we're going to be forming a, a strong alliance with Clout Hub and with their tool, Truth Hub, which is an alternative to sites like Zoom. And uh, I think a superior alternative. So we're going to be doing a lot more on that in the next few weeks and months. Uh, in the end, God always wins. God is going to win here too. God did not create the human race to fail. Uh, God is almighty. God created this place, put values in it, uh, made it work a certain way. And I don't care what these demons want you to believe. You can't make up a world in which you w wish it to be, what you want it to be. It's just, you know, wishing and hoping don't make it so. And this lying and sanity has got to stop. Uh, what Tucker Carlson said, I believe yesterday, is what we should be saying is the things that they don't want us to say. Things that we're censored for have to be broadcast because the demon World Economic Forum knows that those things that those statements are true. They don't. They hate truth because they're serving the father of lies. Uh, we need to get down and start by repenting. In spirit of Second Chronicles seven fourteen, get on our knees, ask God's forgiveness for letting the world get to this way. How many millions of babies have been torn apart by vicious abortionists? in the womb and the democrats tend to want to ride in this year run the presidency on the right of a woman over her sexual organs and control her sexual being translated that means kill more babies they want death they want to destroy populations it's a malthusian movement it wants to reduce america america to its knees and and destroy billions of people around the world this insanity that is controlling Washington, controlling Geneva, controlling China, they would have us go to a thermonuclear war and uh, trying to foster a war between Russia and the United States right now. Uh, again, this is insanity. It must stop. Uh, God will intervene, and, but not until we do our part. We've got to, God will act through human means. And I've opposed these people for a long time. Um, my wife of 32 years wanted me to quit for a while. I said I was retired. She's now divorced me. I think God has taken her out of my life and I'm back at it. Uh, that's simply the way it is. And, uh, we'll be doing more with books. We'll be doing more with podcasting. We'll be doing more with interviewing. And, uh, we're going to do more to shine the light on this evil and send it back to hell where it belongs. Dr. Drone Corsi today is. Uh, Friday is January 26, 2024, an election year. We're getting ready for the election already now. Trump seems to certainly be a presumptive uh, candidate for the, for the Republican Party. I don't know who the Democrats are going to pick, probably Michelle. That ought to be interesting. Uh, and I'm sure we can revisit the abomination, which I wrote in 2008. And a lot of the issues back then that were not resolved will come forward again, including Obama's Marxism. Dr. Jerome Corsi, thank you for joining us. We'll be back on Monday. God bless.